the t-shirt you're wearing today, Pat, uh, Children's Ground, some important work that you've been doing behind the scenes with that charity. Just tell us a little bit about that and what they do. Well, Children's Ground uh, work with First Nations, Aboriginal communities, and uh, up in uh, Arunda, the nation up in the Northern Territory. And uh, I've been involved with them for, for a couple of years. It's been a learning curve for me, to say, to say the least. I got introduced through, through my niece, who was raising funds for them, and said, Pat, I think you might be interested in this. Do you know what's happening with the Aboriginal communities around Australia? I've been out of the country for 30 years. I had no idea how bad the situation is. I had to see it for myself, so um, I went up there with Children's Ground, who run a, a fantastic community of getting the Aboriginals together, the elders and the, with the young kids, and getting on the ground and, and on the land and teaching them their language. And I went up there, and I've got to say, I was embarrassed to be Australian. I was shocked. Uh, it was just mind blowing. I, I was in tears half the time just seeing the poverty and the situation that these people are in. And, and as an Australian, being away for 30 years, I was, I, I just, I had no idea. I thought things were better, but the, things have got worse. I mean, it's absolutely 100% clear that this system is not working. Um, children's Ground are, are change, trying to change this system. They're, they're, they're empowering Aborig, Ab, Aboriginal elders in the community. Uh, for me, I went up there to, to visit Felicity Hayes. Now, Felicity is the traditional landowner of, of Alice Springs. She owns Alice Springs, the whole land. She was living in a caravan, a car not a nice caravan, a caravan with holes, no heat, no, no electricity, freezing cold in the winter, boiling, uh, uh, boiling hot in the summer. She had no electricity and against all human rights, no water. And I could not believe this. And her and her partner were there and they, they welcomed me. And I saw these sheds out the back uh, and I thought, what are these, t tool sheds or something? No, they were the places where her family were living. They were, they were sheds, corrugated, corrugated iron roof sheds where her family were living. But they moved out because they shut the water off. Why, why did the government shut the water off? Well, I, I believe that they wanted to put, they wanted to put solar, power, uh, solar powers all over her land, the solar power panels over their land. They wanted to push her out. This is a lady whose land, who actually owns Alice Springs. And so the more I got involved in this, the more, as you can see, I'm very passionate yeah, about it. It's, it's really very, very upsetting to me. And it's, I just cannot believe what's going on here. The system has failed these people so badly. And I'm passionate that the Children's Ground are doing something, uh, uh, the, the sort of work that Children's Ground are doing um, is basically what the Aboriginals used to do, is get the children working with the adults, work with the young people instead of going out and drinking and doing drugs. They're back into the community, helping the kids, getting jobs. Um, children's Ground are doing fantastic. It's almost a trying groundbreaking sort of uh, uh, theory or, 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 or system. So, um, you know, I've got, I just felt like I had to do something about this. And uh, this is, so it's, it's been a bit of a, pa it's a passion for me, but this is not an isolated thing. The, all the Aboriginal, the elders I talk to, they're losing their language. They're losing all their knowledge. Uh, the kids are being forced to learn English going to school, but they don't speak English. So they drop out of school. Mm. Um, they're putting in the, the they call that the AB ward, which is the Aboriginal kids who cannot speak English because, well, they don't speak English. So the uh, Children's Ground are doing a great job teaching them English, teaching them how to write their own language, how to live off the land, and, and all these. It is the oldest, it is one of the oldest systems in the world, the Aboriginal system. is absolutely is such brilliant, smart people. And yet, you know, I hate to say it, they don't like to say this, but the, the, their knowledge is dying out. Mm. And I just can't. I feel very, very passionate about that. It's very, very upsetting to me, and I think anybody who looks into that would, would, would understand that. Here I am, at, you, you know, in an, on, on Aboriginal land, you know, I, I got to the stage now where I just cannot celebrate Australia Day. I'm sorry, I just cannot celebrate. As an Australian who brought two Davis Cups home, represented my country, uh, January 26 is not a day of celebration for me, and I, and I think people who really look into it would, would question that. And so uh, that's not going to be a celebration day for me. It's, it's like an invasion day. It's uh, celebrating white England, English landing, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it certainly has changed my life to, to, to see what, what's going up up there. All right, um, Pat, we've got to get to the news, uh, but it was great to chat to you, man, and, uh, and that, call, that, that work that you're doing is terrific <laughs> on, on children's ground. Uh, you are passionate about it, and, yeah. and a name as big as yours does bring uh, a lot of attention to that. So thank you very much for your time today, uh, and good luck with your work uh, during Thanks, the Australian Open. And we'll put those